In this video, we're going to cover projectile motion using the PASCO projectile launcher, um, our standard photo gates, and the smart timer. So to get this set up, we have our photo gate mounting bracket, and this is going to attach um, to the projectile launcher. First, we need to attach the photo gate heads. You'll note there's storage right here um, for the screws that mount the photo gates. So when lining this up, you'll have on each side of the photo gate, you'll have two set screw holes. Use the smaller one and we'll take this and align it such that this screw lines up with this hole. And we'll attach them here. Just get it finger tight. And then do the same thing with the other one. Okay. Get that tight. There we go. All right. So here is our photo gate and bracket assembly. Um, then we're going to take this square nut and insert it through the bottom of the T slot here on the projectile launcher. And you want to set these up so that the beam here is as close to the muzzle as possible without actually already being in front of it. There we go. So now we'll take our smart timer and we're going to connect each of these with the supplied cables. So we'll connect the first one, which is closest to the projectile launcher. All right. And then we will connect this cable for this one to port one, the first port. Then we'll take the other cable and connect it to port two. Okay. Then we'll set this aside. All right. So now we have that all set up. Um, a couple other things you'll need later, um, just a blank piece of paper with a visible line through the middle. Um, this line will be used for marking the uh, expected landing point of your ball. And then we have a sheet of carbon paper, which will go over the white piece of paper. And when the ball is launched, it'll leave a mark on the paper, um, which you can measure the distance from. All right. All right. There we go. All right. So I've already set up a um, spreadsheet um, with some built-in equations to calculate everything out just to get through the initial data collection process. So the way we do this, let's see here. So we're going to take a ball, and I already have a ball in here. We're going to use the plunger to depress the ball to its third uh, locking position, or the, the largest range. Then we will turn on the smart timer with the button on the left. It's right here. And then we need to navigate through the menus, which is very simple. So you'll go in order from one, two, three. One will select from this list of menus right here. And then you press the two button to select through the uh, various options um, 
from the previous. So we'll select one and we want to do the time between two gates. So we're on time right now. Um, now we need to select the mode and we're going to do two gates. So now we hit the start button. And when we hit that, we should see an asterisk symbol, which means it's ready to start collecting data. And so when I pull this, it'll then give me the time between those two gates. And we'll then record this value as one of our trial runs. Okay. And then we'll do this two more times. So depress the ball. And then hit start. And then again. And surprisingly consistent. Same as the last one. And then do one more run. Place the ball in the projectile launcher. Push the spring back to its max position. Hit start. And then pull. And then record this final value. There we go. So this will then give us the average time between these two gates, which will give us our initial velocity. And we calculate that initial velocity by taking this average time and dividing it into the distance of separation between the gates, which is 10 centimeters. So here's, here's the equation, um, just so you can see. So it's 0.1 meters divided by the average time between the two gates. That's our initial velocity. Next thing we need to do is make sure ahead of time, and I already did this, you wanna record the vertical distance from the bottom of the ball when it's at the muzzle's end here to your surface. Now this is gonna be different um, depending on if you're, you're firing at a target that's on the same level as the surface it's fired from, or if you're firing at a target that's below, um, and you'll adjust that accordingly. <clears throat> so this value can be different, but for this demonstration, um, the distance from the bottom of the ball to the table surface is uh, 0.252 meters. And the initial angle needs to be recorded as well. For this one, I just set it up to 41 degrees arbitrarily. Um, here you have to display the value in radians. So I converted that 41 degrees into radians. And then the next step, using the um, initial angle and initial velocity, <clears throat> um, then calculate the time of flight. And then from there, um, we can actually go ahead if we want to. I don't have space in here to do this, but for demonstration, you can verify the time of flight that you calculated using the time of flight pad here. It's very easy to do. You will set it up so that you're replacing one of the um, photo gates, so you're replacing this photo gate right here. So we're moving the cable from two, number two here, and replacing it with the cable from the time of flight pad. And the measurement stays the exact same. We're still using the same setting because we're using this as a, a stopping device to stop the timer, and this photo gate starts the timer. So just for example, let's see here. We'll load a ball. I'll hit start and I'll pull it. And nothing stopped yet until I hit the pad here. And that'll be how you can verify the time of flight. Just make sure that when you do do that, that you subtract the thickness um, of the pad from the uh, total distance that the ball is traveling uh, vertically.
So the next step after this um, will be to take this information and then calculate the expected horizontal range that this will cover. And then what you'll do is using the um, piece of white paper and carbon paper I mentioned earlier, you will set up the white piece of paper so that the line that you marked on it is at the distance that is specified right here. And then you'll take your carbon paper and adhere this to the uh, white piece of paper so it'll leave a mark when the ball hits. Um, it's important that you, you have a hard surface underneath. Um, if you're shooting this onto carpet, padded floor, it's not going to leave as uh, a superficial of a mark um, as it would if it were a hard surface. Um, so do that. And so once you do that, you'll do the same like we did for finding initial velocity. You'll fire the ball 10 times and then average the distance that was measured and compare it um, to what was calculated here. And that's the basics of doing projectile motion um, using the smart timer.